Hello, welcome to Zennial Finance. I am an older Gen Z, younger millennial documenting my personal finance journey here on YouTube. So in today's video, we're gonna be budgeting out my second paycheck of January, 2023. On screen right now, you see YNAB. YNAB stands for You Need a Budget. It is the budgeting software system that I use to budget out all my paychecks and just control all, all of my money. So I've been doing these videos for a long time. I took a little bit of break in 2022, but I'm back to posting bi-weekly uh, budgets with me every time I get paid. So let's just jump right into it because the first thing we're going to do is just update my uh, accounts and make sure that everything is correct. Here I'm in my checking account and this is my paycheck. It was for 1603.78 approve. It also cleared and so my account should be at 336595. That is correct. And then the other thing we're going to enter in is just going to open up my Chase credit card app on my phone. So not on screen, um, but on my phone so that I can make sure all of my transactions that I have on my credit cards, which is where I do the majority of my spending, um, is up to date. So this preferred credit card is at 11841 and that is correct. I don't have any additional spending on that. Great. So then we'll come over here to my Freedom Unlimited and this 966 for Mo is cleared. So is, am I at 923.91? Right, perfect. So that was pretty easy. I had been doing a little bit better this week about putting in my transactions as I spent. So that was all I needed to do to make sure my credit cards are correct. I know I don't have any spending on my Discover card or any of my other accounts. So with that done on the budget, we can then open up my tracking accounts. So tracking accounts are accounts that don't necessarily impact your um, your budget. You know, it's not money that you can just spend willy nilly, um, but it's still money that you have available and that you want to track the balance of. So for me, this is mainly my um, assets, my investment accounts, everything like that. So you can see my 401k. To check my 401k, I'm just gonna open up my payroll app on my phone and look at my pay stub. So 401k was 808, it was actually 97 cents instead of 96. So I'm just going to approve that and then I'm just going to have that be the standard. If it's one cent off on some paychecks, like that's fine. But this is the first uh, paycheck at this new rate because you can see last paycheck, I was doing 26% of my gross pay going to my pre-tax 401k and now I'm doing 27%. And I'm not going to reconcile this account yet because I always reconcile my tracking accounts, like my investment accounts once a month at the end of the month, just whatever the ending balance is for the month after accounting for, you know, the market gains or losses or things like that. And then also for my HSA, I had a contribution this paycheck. So that should have come out to 128.85 and that's correct. And then I do wanna add one more thing in here. I actually think it was deposited back on like the third. And so this is going to be, it's going to be employer contribution. So uh, my employer does contribute $500 a year into my HSA. So the max for 2023 is I believe $3,850 for the entire year. And since my employer does a contribution of $500, I can only do $3,350 or else I would supersede the max. So we're going to enter in this 500 contribution. It's really great. They put it in right at the beginning of the year. I just think that's a nice thing to do. Flow of $500, so we're going to save that. Um, and again, I will reconcile this account balance at the end of the month, and that will help me determine what my net worth is for January of 2023. But then all of my other accounts, I shouldn't have had any movements on. So with that, we can then jump into my budget and budget out the 1603.78. So with a quick glance down, you can see most of my expenses are covered for the month. I do have some overspending that we will take care of, but all of my expenses are covered for the month because I do budget one month ahead. So if we actually jump forward into February, which I know there's some big ugly red here, we'll cover that, don't worry, but you can see a lot of my uh, responsibilities and bills are all covered for, because again, I do budget one month ahead and I cover most of my spending and expenses with the first paycheck of the month. Let's ignore the spending, the overspending for right now, and you're gonna see a big overspending big $5,000 red overspending right there. But with the 1603, what I'm gonna do is actually come down to my savings. These are some savings items that I actually budget for in the current month that I get paid. So I'm gonna do 150 to travel and trips, 125 to uh, next year's medical deductible. And then I'm not gonna be able to put the full 1581 in here because I only have like 1328. I will be doing 1315. So that was gave us an even $1,400 there. So I am under this goal because I do want to have $44,000 by the end of the year, but I'm not too worried about that right now. I am going to be kind of falling behind it for a little bit, but then when I get my uh, three paycheck months, which I believe are in June and December this year, 
that will help me and I will also get like a mid-year bonus as well so that's going to kind of take up take care of some of this falling behind that I'm doing and this is mainly a down payment fund but that is still about two to three years at least out um, but it's still close enough that I want to keep the majority of it in cash or at least you know not invested in the stock market I have been putting some into bonds and I'm thinking about maybe doing some into like um, CDs or just something that's a little bit less um volatile than the stock market right now but that's why i have so much money going to here so again we're going to skip this five thousand dollars we'll come back to it um with this 1378 i will go ahead and cover this dining out i did let's do 966 there that leaves me 412 which i guess i didn't need to do because i had i had 706 still in here but i should not do be doing any more spending in my me myself and i category so i'm actually going to zero that out and I have to go back up into my ready to assign, which leaves me 1118. You know what I've been doing recently is just putting like a couple dollars here and there into my dental and vision category because I did kind of deplete this a lot um, in 2022. So let's just do another $10 every little bit helps and then with this 118 i'll just go ahead and put this into my holding slash end of quarter bonus for now i just don't like to have random cents and change in my uh, other main categories if i can help it okay so with that my ready to assign is now at zero however we do need to address the elephant in the room which is under my investing and in fire section is bonds so again like i mentioned i transferred about five thousand dollars of my cash into uh, treasury bonds so actually if we look here you can see now this is at seven thousand dollars and for a while it was just at two thousand dollars i physically transferred the money from my savings account and here i'll show you right you can see this physical transfer out of my savings account into my checking account 4500 and then i just had you know an additional 500 dollars sitting fine in my um checking account so i did make the physical transfer between my accounts but that doesn't actually impact my budget because money is just money in my budget so i got to determine where this five thousand dollars is coming from so what i'm gonna have this be is actually it doesn't really matter again money is money so i can take it from any one of these like long-term savings funds and at the end of the day if i did need to spend from you know a particular fund i can move money around i bonds which is what i put the five thousand dollars in they are locked down you can't you know take that money out for at least one year so it's a little bit illiquid right now but if anything came up like i said i could kind of take money from any one of these other categories as i need to it doesn't really matter but this is just how i kind of have it laid out for me to make sense um, but what i'm going to do is move this four thousand dollars from my car replacement category because i'm not thinking i will actually need to replace my car for hopefully another year or two my like big goal is to get it to at least the year of 2025 and i really don't drive my car that much which has been great for not needing to get it replaced but also like not driving the car that much also makes your car need a lot of repairs as well which is kind of annoying like you're kind of damned if you do damned if you don't but i'm gonna move four thousand of this to my bonds and then i'm just gonna make sure i have a note here Yes, so I have a note here. You can see this 4,000 goal was reached. I transferred 4,000 into bonds and I cannot pull it out again until January of 2024. But I'm going to delete the savings target because it's going to tell me that, you know, I need to invest $4,000 in here, but I did already meet this. Um, but I will move it down here since there's actually like not any money in it right now. And then to cover this last $1,000, I'm going to say there's now 3K in I bonds as of 1-25-2023 and move 1k cover this with um, my emergency fund what do i call it e-fund yeah general e-fund okay so my general emergency fund is actually eight thousand dollars but three thousand of that is now a bond so two thousand of the money of my general emergency fund that is in bonds i can now take out it's been one year of course if you take out that money before five years you lose the last three months of interest so it's kind of like mm still best to try not to touch that money but i have five thousand in really liquid cash right now plus all this all these other you know savings funds and everything like like that that i have available to me if i need to and then additional two thousand that i could take out right now in bonds if i needed to plus one thousand more dollars in bonds that would be kind of locked in until january of next year so i'm going to come up here and edit this because again i don't want it to say that i need to fund it more because i technically don't um, so I'm just going to save this savings balances at 5,000 and then it will be a little green check mark. 
So the amount of money that I kind of had available in cash, I feel like didn't really change. Um, it's just in a different account now. So instead of just, you know, sitting in my savings account, which was earning, you know, 2.75% interest, now it's in bonds, which is earning a bigger interest rate. And I don't need that much money in like liquid cash right now. And I will probably be putting more money into either uh, more bonds because you can buy up to $10,000 for the year. I just did 5,000 right now or a CD or certificate of deposit. I've been shopping around for things like that. Just to try to get a little bit more better return on this cash while still being in a relatively safe asset class. Okay, so that is the main things that I needed to do on this budget. I did want to kind of go into my reports and just do an update on my spending so far this year. So you can see uh, my income has been just about 33.21 and the vast majority of that has been my full-time job. It has kind of been a high spend month for me if I'm being honest. So my responsibilities, this is my bills to my mom's $550 a month that covers my phone bill, car insurance, and then about $250 a month in groceries and household expenses because I do live at home in my mom's house, so I don't pay her rent, but I chip in. I obviously pay all of my bills that I need to pay, everything that's related to me. It's just under her name, so I, I just send her the money to cover those expenses, and then the $250 is what I kind of do in groceries a month. And then I did give her an extra $20 for the power wash because, I don't know, she needed cash, and I was like, here's 20 bucks, you don't need to pay me back for that, so I did that. My subscriptions, everything like that. And monthly varied living, I actually spent $94.41 on health and hygiene, and I just got a lot. You can see I got a tongue scraper from TJ Maxx, but I got a lot of skincare, moisturizer, jade roller, mouthwash, retinol cream. Like I got a lot of, you know, health and hygiene products that I needed. So I should be good for a couple months. I usually don't spend nearly this much money every month in all of my monthly varied living, including like gas and everything, let alone one category. Um, Cause I only usually budget 75 bucks for, you know, my monthly varied living. But this month I went over, which, it's fine, I probably don't need to get a restock of many of these products, probably for like a good six to eight months at least. And then me, myself, and I, I actually did really good with dining out this month. I was so proud of myself. Um, you can see I did a $15 reload at Starbucks and then I got two um, like lunches out when I, I had the day off. I had two days off this month, so of course I had to get lunch. <laughs> And I didn't even do that too bad on splurges and mindless wants. Again, I did go to TJ Maxx, so we got like a bunch of random things. Bath mat, which isn't even a splurge. I just really needed a bath mat. I got hair ties and I got a bunch of like random stuff. But then you can see here, 140 in beauty and pampering. Like I said, I had a couple days off this month, so I got my hair cut, which was $52, which isn't bad. And then I did a $13 tip. But then while I was there like checking in for my haircut at the spa, they were like, oh, we're doing 50% off facials. And I had not budgeted or planned to do a facial, but 50% off a facial, I, could, I got a 60 minute facial for $45, which is like really good because usually it's like $90. Are you kidding me? So the facial was 45 plus another $10 tip for $125.98, which wouldn't, again, wouldn't be too bad. But then I also had a massage. It was like a self-care weekend for me, but the massage was mainly covered because I had a gift card. I actually got gifted for my birthday like two years ago that I had not yet used. So I used that gift card to cover the cost of the massage. And then I just needed like to cover the tip, which was 15 bucks. So all in all, I didn't do bad at all. It was the first facial I ever got. I get my hair cut maybe like literally every year and a half. And then it was like the first massage I had in two years. And again, I didn't even pay for the full massage. I just paid for the tip. So I actually got a really good deal on all their services. However, it just like with everything coming in at the same time, I did go over my personal spending budget. I usually try to keep this around 170 and then I spent 211. So what, that's like 40, 41, $42, which again is about the price of that facial I got. So I'm not too concerned because I probably won't do any more spending in this beauty and pampering line for like the rest of the year. But just, the, just this month, I went a little bit over it. I went a little bit over there and I went a little bit over in my health and hygiene line. So it was just kind of a rough month in that regard. And then for giving, I did $75 in donations. And oh, I bought a, a mug um, for my sister. Like her birthday's not until August, but I saw this like mug at TJ Maxx that I thought she would like. So I was like, oh, it's five bucks. I might as well get it. And then obviously the $5,000 to the bonds and five fifty dollars to my Roth IRA. And then um, electronics, <laughs> again, TJ Maxx, I got a charger cord. And so I, instead of putting that into splurges and mindless wants where I put like all my other random TJ Maxx items, um, I was like, well, I'm really over in my personal spend. So technically it is for electronics because it was a phone charger. So it can go to my uh, sinking funds, which makes me feel better about myself. So if I just take out the, um, you know, investing in bonds spending, I spent in total $1,027. So I still had a net income of about $2,293. Now, of course, um, with the bonds and everything, 
a lot more money left my checking account than came in this month, but that's totally fine. It just came from my savings. Okay, so I think that's going to be it for this video. Um, make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you liked it, you wanna see my future budget with me's, and I will also be doing a January 2023 net worth update once I get all the final numbers in for the month. So that will probably be posted like early February. I'm also hopefully gonna get a, get a video out in the first week of February where I go over my total spending and income for 2022 because I have yet to do that for the year, even though I usually like to do that video and reflection in January. It just didn't happen this month, so I'm hoping to do that next month. But when I do do it, um, I will post a video. So again, make sure you subscribe to my channel. As always, I hope y'all are staying safe and healthy and that you have a good day. Bye.